Yeah, something is very disturbing to me, and it could happen to your house. Hopefully, it doesn't happen to your house. Hopefully, it doesn't happen to my house. Froggy, I think it'd be very funny if it happened to your house. Uh, Why would it be so funny if it happened to me? If uh, squatters moved in. I'll kill a squatter. (laughs) Now, seriously, I don't know what it is, but the last, like, week or so, I have compiled, look at this, one, two... Three, four. I've got four different squatter stories. Why are you smiling, Roxanne? Uh, I, Listen, is, you, is you, and, cra- you and Dig Dug are Listen. in the you're in the real estate business, and you guys have rental properties. You you ought to be concerned with squatters. You know what? I am, and that smile. It was like a heesh smile. It wasn't oh, a that, real oh, smile. That, oh, that was that was a nervous. That was a that was a nervous smile. Yes, yes. and I kind of like when somebody hurts themselves or falls down the stairs, you start uh. laughing. Yeah. That's like a nervous laugh. Is that it? Yeah, or just like a, <laughs> yes, exactly, a nervous laugh. But I, I do worry about that because people know how to work work the angles and Yeah, I follow squat. a YouTube channel that uh, <laughs> they come, they bust them and then they have the, all these legal ways that they could stay yes. there. Wait, yes, there's a There's a squatter YouTube oh, yeah. channel, really? I follow a good squat. I follow a good, ev- oh. these guys that evict people, oh, it always turns into a fight. It's always it's so great. Anybody listening? Any any real estate agents listening? Anybody with a squatter story? Anybody that's listening to the program right now and you had either your home? You know, there are stories where people go on vacation and they come back and there are squatters in their house, and there are some nightmare stories where you can't kick them out. You can't I mean, what the how is how is that even possible? You would have squatters in your house. You wouldn't even know it. Uh, we cut Just the like crap. how you don't even know where your laundry room is. All right, stop it. All right, 800-990-1047. Seriously, would anyone like to give us a squatter story if you're in real estate and you have a story or if you've ever had a property or maybe your home was overtaken by squatters? It happens. If you have any angle, any story, maybe you know of this happening to a friend or a relative. Eight hundred nine nine zero one zero four seven. I mean, you know what? It's, it's like a like a, a scary. What was the movie with um, mm. you know the uh, the oh. Pacific Heights? Remember yes. that? Yes, yes. No. Remember where he rolls in and as a tenant? Never that's saw uh, that. Michael Keaton. And Pacific Heights, man. That's a ooh, man. That, that just makes your skin crawl. And he's like, the landlord can't do a damn thing. He rolls in, doesn't pay his rent, then Ugh. like dismantles everything, takes the baseball. I mean, just takes everything. Just t- totally deconstructs the place. All right, if anyone has a good squatter story, fire up the phones, 800-990-1047. And the stories that I have, and I, the last week, I've just kind of put them in a pile. I'm like, you know what? Maybe we'll have to do a squatter segment. Here's one. Squatters set up at a Hollywood Hills home when police knocked and only fans model answered. A vacant multi-million dollar mansion in the Hollywood Hills played host to a group of squatters including a person who created a fake lease agreement, a woman who claimed to be making content for her OnlyFans page, and a French bulldog. Real estate agents Emily Randall Smith and her husband Tyler Smith had planned to prepare the home for an open house when they were met with obvious signs that someone had made the home their own. The security box where the agents had kept the key was broken apart, and a new mailbox had been placed out front. (laughs) The couple had shown the property uh, to potential buyers uh, before Christmas. This story happened in early January. Then it sat vacant for a couple of weeks. Uh, The home was listed on uh, Airbnb and is fully furnished, including kitchenware. Uh, On the day that she and her husband returned home for the open house, they couldn't get inside. She peered through the window, spotted a man lying down in one of the bedrooms. That's when the couple called the LAPD. Officers knocked on the door. Nobody answered. Officers walked around the property, used a speaker on their police cruiser to order anyone in the home to come out. The homeowner told Randall Smith that they did not want the police to break down the front door to check for squatters. The police left. The couple didn't know what to do. Anyway, the squatters had stocked the refrigerator. They just moved in. Oh, man, look at the phones. Every damn line. Now, Now, hold on. I've also heard... What is the real estate venture? Is it called Open Door? Mm -hmm. I've heard that there are some horror stories with Open Door that 
don't you like go show the home yourself or something? How does that work? Is it open door? What? Open door. How does that? But that I've, one, I, maybe you're thinking of a different one because open doors where they buy your house. I, I, I just heard a story or two about, I think it's open door. Uh, anyway, look at the phones here. All right, so that's uh, uh, Anonymous, John, Todd, Tom, everyone. Hold on. I'm going to phones here in just a second. 800, one just dropped off, so a line just opened up. 800 990 1047. I'll go to phones in a second. So that's the Hollywood Hill story. Then here, squatters take over Georgia man's home while he was caring for his sick wife. Now he can't evict them. How can this be? A Georgia man claims he returned home from caring for his sick wife to find that squatters had changed the locks on his home, moved in. Now local laws are blocking him from evicting the alleged freeloaders. How could somebody break into your house, change the locks, and you can't have them instantly arrested and thrown out? How can that be? I'm telling you, there's all kinds of like mm -hmm. angles and yep. laws that they could do it. Why? How? Basically, these people came in Friday, broke into my house, had a U-Haul move all their stuff in. It's frustrating. It's very frustrating. I can't even sleep. The cab uh, man, Paul Collins, told WSB Television. Oh, he can't sleep. I mean, this is okay. So that's uh, L.A., Georgia. Here now, here's a Florida story. Squatters ravage Florida home and warn that people will be blown up or shocked if they enter. Jeez, I mean, sh like shocked really? with booby traps. Not like yeah, shocked like uh, like in yeah, like an actual a shock. Yeah, like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Just coming back. Or or blown up. Where's my leg? Yeah. Uh, this is in a woman taking care of her brother's Florida home, found it overrun with squatters, left piles of drug paraphernalia, trash, homemade signs, threatening visitors. Carrie Black Phillips was tasked with taking care of the home in Milton, which is up in the panhandle. Uh, she found her brother's ex-girlfriend and more than a dozen others shacked up inside. Uh, even found, uh, she actually she brought a gun to the hole. <laughs> I get to shoot the squatters. Is, is, that her, is that her? Anyway, so three stories. Then here's another one. Why can't squatters like Brett Flores get evicted? And how did it get to this point? A former live-in Queens handyman has refused to leave the $2 million home where he once worked leaving the rightful property owners out in the cold, and it's totally legal. How can this be? Help me! All right, let's go to phones. I'm sure somebody can explain All right, it. 800-990-1047. 800-990-1047. If you've got a squatter story, 800-990-1047. We'll start with John in Lakeland. Hey, John, you're on the MJ Morning Show. Uh, hey there. Hey. So um, I was living in a duplex, and a big company from Orlando bought it out, and we had a few months to move. And as they got empty, the local homeless started moving in. And when the cops were called, I asked them, I said, why can't, why isn't this breaking and entering? They said, because if these people say, oh, I was invited in, they're not the judge of that. They could end up in a lawsuit. It's just a crazy law. But the the new owners, they did something really neat besides evicting them. They said, listen, we'll give you $100 to leave. And the people took the money, and they left. But I had to live with them for about a month, and I told them to stay away from me. Just stay away. Don't talk to me. They knew I carried, and I told them just stay as far away from me as you can. Wow. All right, buddy. Thanks for the story, John. Right. I mean, crazy stuff here. Marguerite is in Tampa. Marguerite, you're on the MJ Morning Show. Hello. Hey, MJ. It's, it's Marguerite. Yes. Hi. Yeah, I have a squatter story. What it's happened? My, uh, na my neighbor, uh, this was a couple of years ago, and um, I would watch their house for them and everything, and there was a car in the driveway. They had a, a for sale sign up. And I noticed the car was still there the next morning, and then all of a sudden, by later that afternoon, this for sale sign was gone. So I called my neighbor, who owns the house, and asked her, hey, I didn't know you sold the house. She said, well, we didn't. And it just so happens a realtor was going there uh, the same day, 
and I guess they had taken the box off, and the realtor found that there's someone there when they're trying to show the house. Yeah. And um, the, so the cops were called, and my neighbor came over and everything. And, I mean, there were cops all uh, – there must have been, like, 15 cars. <laughs> they were lined up around the streets. And the uh, the people who came out was a man and a woman. And, um, I mean, the woman looked like – I've heard, I guess, mess people have these pot marks on their face or something. That's what she had. He had – Yeah, uh, so, oil. you know, the, the meth users will get, like, scabs on their body and their faces and all that, yeah. She, she had them covering her face. Ugh. And the guy had this gold, gold – So what was the ultimate outcome? What what happened? How, did they get the squatters out? What What, what occurred? They did. They got the squatters out. Like, I'm not sure how the police mm. were able to make them leave. I don't know if it's because they weren't there for very long. I had heard that if they have the uh, you know change of address and everything, that then they have more cases staying there. Mm. I don't know, but it, it happened so fast. You know, they weren't there for very long. Marguerite, thanks for the call. See that. That's at least somewhat palatable. Clearly, you don't want anyone breaking in and squatting, but to get them out quickly that seems like a dream come true when you hear these stories that people can't get squatters out of their homes i mean this it doesn't you can't even comprehend it that someone breaks into your house and then you can't get them out all right kim is in dover uh 800-990-1047 800-990-1047 hey kim do you have a squatter story for us um, I do. It's a, uh, regarding my brother. Uh, my brother let some of his friends stay there because they were uh, homeless. So he said, well, you know, the friends, I'll let them stay, you know, in my home for a little bit. They had their address changed to his address. Uh. They moved in. After four or five months, he started noticing that some of his stuff was missing. Yep. So he approached them about it. And since they weren't working, they started pawning all of his stuff. So oh, he they- tried to get him out of the house. They wouldn't leave. He called the cops. And the cops actually told him. Um, hey, Mr. Such-and-such, do do you have a place to go? And he's like, well, why do I have to leave? This is my address. He says, yes, but they live here, too. So until we get it straightened out, wow. you're going to have to leave no. until we get strapped. My brother had to hire an attorney <sighs> to get them out of his home. Oh my God. And they, obviously, they had a drug problem, right? So they were selling his stuff for drugs? No, they weren't selling any drugs, but my brother... Is no, no, no. I'm saying they, they pawned his stuff probably to buy drugs. Oh, probably, yeah, yeah. probably, because I know they stole his phone. They 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 were selling off uh, family antiques. They were selling off a lot of different things. Um, so yeah, so he finally got him out of there. He had to hire an attorney to get them out of the house. It's insane. Thank you, Stephen and Lando Lake. Stephen, you're on the MJ Squatter Lines. <laughs> Hello, Stephen. Hey, hey. Uh, so my dad and I, uh, my dad owns pest control business, and we do termite inspections. And you know, we have real estate agents calling us time to do termite inspections. Oh, man, I'll tell you what. You know you get squatters out of your house? You tent it for termites. <laughs> that would be a brilliant idea. <laughs> um, but my dad got started this particular morning really early. Uh, agent called him the previous day, said, I need a termite inspection done on this house. So my dad went out there 6 o'clock in the morning. Um, he normally starts on the outside. Whenever he pulled up, he noticed the car in the driveway and they said it's vacant. So he said that's weird. And he said that there were cameras around the house. So between the time that the agent called him um, to have the the termite inspection done to the time my dad went out there to do the termite inspection, someone moved in to live in the house. Yeah. And what happened? Were they able to get him out or you don't know the, the final disposition? I, the agent... The agent was like, there's no one in the house, and it turns out that, you know, obviously there was, but yeah. they had to call 911, and I we don't we don't know what happened after that. Yep. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. Thomas, all right, two more calls, Andrew, and then we got to move on. Uh, Thomas in Bradenton. Thomas, you're on the MJ Morning Show, Q105. Hello. Yeah, I, I bought a house. I was in New Jersey. I bought a house in Florida, mm-hmm. and uh, I moved to put all my stuff in a U-Haul, put my wife and children in the vehicle we came down and there were people in the house and i told them that my situation oh no we rented this house and uh, they had no lease nothing and uh, i called the police the police came and they told me well this is a civil matter oh. uh, there's nothing we can do and this was in 1971 oh my god and, yeah. and uh i had to hire an attorney 
rent the motel room, pay for the extra time with the U-Haul, keep all my stuff in. We are in the motel for a month. Look at this. And, we are, uh, we're eliciting stories and uh, horror-filled memories from 53 years ago. Well, at one time, uh, when the people finally did move out, yep. th- they removed the air conditioning system. Oh, yeah. They, they took the tiles off the wall in the bathroom. They scraped the tiles off the wall. For what reason? They, I don't know. They took them with them. We can get good money for these tiles. They smashed the toilet. <laughs> So when I was able to get the house back, right. it was unlivable for a while. Oh, yeah. That's insane. Thomas, thank you. All right. Oh, man, look at the phones won't stop ringing here. Uh, Tom is in Ruskin. Tom, you're on the MJ Morning Show. If you're just tuning in, we're just talking about squatters. That the last week, I just have all these squatter stories from the Hollywood Hills to here in Florida to Georgia and other places where squatters can move in, and sometimes it's a bitch to get them out. All right, Tom, go ahead. You're up next. Uh, good morning. Uh, I just moved here from Minnesota two years ago. Last year, there was two houses right across the street from my house that were empty. And one day I came home from work, and there's a lady from uh, one of the pizza parlors delivering pizza. And I'm going, she was there over an hour. I'm going, what happened? Uh, can I help you? What happened? And she goes, well, I delivered a pizza to the lanai in the back of this house. They said it was for a surprise. And come to the front door and we'll pay you. She never got paid. <gasps> mm. She oh. sat there for an hour. And all of a sudden the cop comes and they're looking at the wrong house. The other one on the other side of them was empty, too, and that's where they were. Mm. They had her deliver the pizza in the lanai. They ran across the yard to pick the pizza up, went back to the empty house and had their fun with pizza. That happened like three or four times before the cops opened up the other house, and they weren't smart because they found two licenses in there, but... Other than that, I don't know if they oh, found the people. Well, I'm sure they found them because they left. Well, they left their license there. Wow, Tom, thank you. Listen, all the lines just lit up. We could still be taking calls for the next 20 minutes on this. Man, that's just scary stuff. Yeah. You know, what is your exposure if someone decides to break into your house and squat? Hmm, that's Wait, wh- what is what is the delineation between squatting and breaking and entering? You know, it's yeah. It's just weird, just uh, law-wise and different parts of the country. and you know, Seems like it's pretty basic. It doesn't uh, belong to you. you You're would not paying think, rent. You know, what about somebody squatting in your home? I mean, would you be protected by, like, the castle doctrine laws where if someone is in your home, someone breaks into your house, uh, you, you, shoot you can shoot them. And, you know, you've got something called the castle doctrine here in Florida and in many other states where – you're able to protect your your property or your business if somebody breaks in. They got the squatter doctrine. They can shoot back. <laughs> <laughs>